So, hello everybody. My name is Bernd and I would like to present you the results of a project I recently finished. It's the Word Club project and it has been started roughly one year ago together with my good old friend Christian. At that time we actually realized um, yeah, that we both um, really want to have such a super cool device, um, such a word clock, and realize as well that it's incredibly expensive if you buy it in the shop. So we somehow decided to go for a do-it-yourself solution and we really tried it. We found several approaches which um, rely on the usage of electronics, of hardcore electronics, including flashing memory, including the soldering, including the the soldering will, yeah, of um, capacitors, of um, resistors, of, of anything. Um, <coughs> we, yeah, we soldered all the LEDs, we powered the whole system, the whole word clock. We realized that it was working for three minutes, then it switched off, did not work anymore and we were somehow frustrated. Um, because we did not really know how to debug such a device, um, we were not really experienced in doing so and um, yeah well then we were wondering whether we should cancel the whole thing but as you see um, today there's a word lock so we did not cancel the project but continued and I recently have then been um, capable of um, assembling <laughs> um, components in a way that they are um, capable of um, displaying the current time these components in this case consist of a Raspberry Pi which provides you a full Linux system and um, an LED stripe, an RGB LED stripe um, yeah, which is then used to, to display the current time. Since we have um, a Raspberry Pi in this word clock um, we have many many possibilities um, <coughs> which are yeah, just um, included um, whenever you use a Raspberry Pi somewhere and um, well what you can do for example then easily is um, since we have RGB LEDs um, you can change colors of this LED stripe um, which might not be so good visible in the video um, but currently I'm seeing a deep green, a deep blue and um, the background is switched off again um, yes, it's switched on. Okay, yeah. So these are actually some capacitors, resist some capacitive resistors, where you can actually touch um, a wire to change, um, yeah, to change or to trigger an event. Well, ah, once again the background. Okay, the background works well. So and now you can also. Um, yeah, change the, 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 the colors of the, of the letters which are indicating the, the time actually. Um, you can switch it off as well. <laughs> and um, since it's a word clock, it's of course um, furthermore a nice feature if you can display um, the time in words. Um, <clears throat> in this case, um, yeah, compared to the previous um, approaches um, which I've been showing, um, the time is displayed in words, but yeah, well, in arbitrary, um, yeah, in a format that supports arbitrary um, letters. So it's actually just rendering, um, yeah, uh, any string um, which you provide um, in the in the in the software that is um, actually running on your on your Raspberry Pi, and then um, yeah, you can provide as well a color and a font type, and then it's um, yeah rendered in that way. Um, as you see already here now, um, you have, since you have the Raspberry Pi inside, um, it's possible to really uh, yeah, um, choose a broad approach towards um, the usage of the, this, um, this word clock as a display. Um, since you can provide random um, font times, since you pro can provide random colors, um, yeah, and since, since of course you can also um, exploit um, well further options the the, the, the um, Raspberry Pi um, offers, such as internet access. So you can, for example, um, politely ask your local um, weather forecast service um, 
what will be the weather tomorrow and then you can um, display it here using such a, um, such a rendering of, of letters. Um, yes, that's it so far, that's the rough layout um, of what this um, word club is capable of doing. If you're still interested, um, I can continue my demo a little. Um, it's about some further details and stuff that has already been implemented. Um, I can, for example, of course, then, as it's a Raspberry Pi inside, I can log into my local laptop, to my local machine, whatever, <clears throat> to my laptop, yes. And I can also, um, for example, animate anything, um, considering this as a display. Um, this is actually animation um, implemented for my wife. Um, I don't know yet whether it's a bit too much, a bit too pinky and so on and so forth, but at least you can do it. And um, this heart has actually just been um, rendered or yeah, displayed um, by loading consecutively a, sec a set of um, PNG files. Um, so um, it's actually relatively easy <laughs> for you in case you would be interested of um, setting up such a thing as well. It would be relatively easy to provide a PNG file, for example, with a resolution of 10 times 11 images, or a series of um, PNG files um, con with this resolution, and then you can actually consider this, um, this work log as a display with a resolution of 10 times 11 images, and then you can display pictures with this resolution. Or you can animate cartoons on it, or you can, well, whatever, do so many things. Maybe also animate this matrix style, um, like, well, um, falling down of letters. Well, whatever. Um, there, there are many different possibilities you could implement games. Tetris. How cool would, would that be? Maybe. Um, so. It can all be done. Um, it's somehow, well, maybe up to Christian and me what we are going to, to implement, but it's also, of course, if you want to contribute, up to you um, to implement these things. If you're interested in the, the, the whole project, um, please contact me. Um, maybe I will put the source code online then if there is any interest. Um, so far, it's still a bit well messy, and I need to clean it up a bit. But um, yeah, it should be fine, I think. Um, <clears throat> well, that should be doable. So what else? Um, that's actually mainly about the current capabilities. Um, since it's using a Raspberry Pi, you have lots of um, other possibilities you can realize as well. Maybe you know better as I do. So. There are really lots of possibilities. You could attach a speech recognition, whatever, and well, um, give the, the, the instructions to the word clock um, just by, by talking to the word clock, whatever. Um, we have a Raspberry Pi in it, and that's awesome. So we can really do lots of things. Um, if you're still watching and if you're still interested in the whole thing, um, yeah, you might be interested also in the wiring. Part. So I can just shortly outline here. Um, okay, that's actually the back side of the word clock. Um, yes, what do we have here? Where to start? Um, well, yeah, I will shortly now outline um, how the whole thing is set up and wired and so on the force. However, please note that. I am absolutely not an expert in electronics. That whatever you're doing related to this project or related to the setup of such a um, or relating to the setup of such a <laughs> such a word clock, um, know what you're doing um, since it's about electronics and since it can be dangerous or well, yes, it can be dangerous or it might um, destroy your hardware, whatever. Um, I can give you absolutely no guarantee on the setup, so know what you're doing and be careful if you want to go for it. Okay, 
what I did um, together with Christian um, in the context of this work was to order first of all um, a power supply. Five volts providing maximum um, current of 10 amperes. That sounds a lot, 10 amperes, but you might need it in case you want to illuminate all the LEDs. We have currently here a set of um, 114 LEDs, which um, yeah, is assembled by, uh, by this main matrix, which consists of 10 times 11 um, LEDs plus 4 LEDs at the corners, which indicate um, yeah, the, 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 the minute precision. The, the whole array, 10 times 11 pixels, is capable of displaying the, the, the current time up to a precision of 5 minutes. And for each additional minute, one of these LEDs um, is illuminated. So, <clears throat> okay, and um, since each of these LEDs drains up to um, 60 milliamperes, I think, um, yeah, we have already a significant current if we really want to run all of these at full power. Um, and then additionally, we need to power the, the Raspberry Pi, so we need a power supply of, yeah, well, at least um, 10 amperes, so we're on the safe side. Okay, these um, 10 amperes, um, they are provided at a voltage of 5 volts, so we have here um, yeah, two cables um, coming in here, one, one, uh, one is ground and one is um, plus 5 volts, and these two, um, uh, these two cables are directly connected here to this LED stripe. Um, which requires um, a ground pin and uh, a 5 volt pin as well and um, additionally it requires a, a data pin which is connected here to the Raspberry Pi but I'll um, yeah, talk about that later. Um, so you have these three pins um, connected to the LED stripe which is starting here at the first minute um, LED and then it goes up here to the second LED um, to the second minute LED and then it um, actually um, enters the main matrix. Um, it goes here down and up again and then it's actually uh, <coughs> alternating up and down um, till, un until we reach here, the, the, the lower right um, corner. Then at the end of this um, matrix is then um, once again um, two, are then once again two LEDs um, connected um, to indicate um, the further minutes and that's it actually already about the, the wiring <coughs> um, of these LEDs. Yes, what, uh, what is maybe worth to mention, um, the, the LED stripe ends here but can be of course um, extended. So if you want to illuminate anything else um, using the word clock you can add ambilight whatever um, you can just extend it. You need to, ass to assure that your power supply provides enough um, power. But um, if this is the case, you, you can um, actually expand the, the, the whole stripe any further. Which, of course, then needs to also um, be considered in the software um, of the Raspberry Pi um, to address these LEDs. Okay, um, that's it so far about the LEDs. Talking about the Raspberry Pi, um, yeah, you see here also once again two cables going um, from the ground and um, plus five volts to the um, to this micro USB um, connector of the Raspberry Pi, so you can um, power your um, Raspberry Pi using the same um, voltage level as the LED stripe is um, run with, so you do not need any level shifting or, or anything else. The only um, power source is actually here provided, providing 5 volts and that's it. That makes it, that makes it actually relatively easy um, to set the whole thing up. Um, okay, concerning the Raspberry Pi, there's furthermore to say that um, then, yeah, well, the, the, the data um, pin is somehow connected um, to one of the GPIO pins, so the, the data pin of the LED stripe, and from here the signal is well triggered and transferred 
um, to the LEDs. Um, so it's up to this point really the simplest possible layout, at least I can imagine. You have two cables coming in providing a ground and five volts. You, you connect them directly to the LED strip, you connect them directly to the Raspberry Pi and then you have one single cable going from the from GPIO pin to the LED stripe and that's it. And then you're in principle ready to run the word clock in a very basic version. <coughs> okay. There are then some further um, add-ons you might would, uh, you, you you might um, want to add. Um, this, for example, here this um, Wi-Fi dongle. Um, to connect to your your local Wi-Fi um, network um, to access the Raspberry Pi and to not um, depend on on, on a LAN um, on on a, on a cable connection. Um, this is necessary due to the fact, um, yeah, well, first of all, to access it if you want to to update any software and so on the force. But it's also necessary due to the fact since the uh, um, Raspberry Pi does not have any battery. Um, in its in its um, basic version, um, you can attach them um, to the TPIO, so it's actually uh, well somehow an extension to it. But um, in the way I actually um, use it here, it does not have any battery. That means as soon as it's powered off, it does not have any information about the current time. And um, whenever you, you you restart it again, it first needs to connect to the internet. Um, to, to get the local time um, and to display it correctly, obviously. Um, okay, therefore this is actually a, a nice thing. Um, a further thing that's maybe interesting is um, this device here. It's a chip which um, provides a sensitivity, um, well, a capacitive sensitivity switch. Um, by, 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 by monitoring capacitive changes of these three wires. Um, you can set up up to five um, different wires and use them as, um, as input or as, as um, yeah, well, somehow as, um, uh, how is this English word? Um, interface, whatever, um, to interact with a Raspberry Pi. Um, and this triggers then here, for example, if I touch it, yes, the um, display of the of the um, word in letters. Um, yes, that's an external chip. Um, what else is there to say? I think there's not so much left to say. Um, <coughs> What maybe needs to be said is um, <laughs> that the whole setup relies on the experience of many, many people. Um, of course, it depends on the, on the great work of the Raspberry Pi developers, but it also um, relies on the initial idea of Christian to say, hey, let's build a word clock. Um, then it relies well, somehow on the, on the actual realization, which has been done then um, yeah, from my side in the last um, few weeks and um, furthermore it rel relies on the hardware setup um, yeah, which, um, which is actually here realized using a, a wooden skeleton of the, of the word clock um, and it's actually necessary to, to drill all those 140 holes um, which is somehow uh, not that easy and straightforward as I originally said because it's just time consuming and um, Thanks to Daniel, um, since he provided me somehow a, a relatively professional device where this is this can be easily um, done. Then furthermore, the the LEDs, um, <coughs> which um, well are prepared in the way that you can directly access them using the the GPIO pin. Um, well, they have been an, um, well a, a great hint. Um, there has been a great hint um, from Marcus um, that these LEDs are actually available, um, which helped a lot in the realization. Um, 
and who else is there to, to thank? Um, there's also Jeffrey, yes, Jeffrey who provided um, this super cool um, library to access the LEDs directly. Um, so he somehow ported um, or implemented a, a library to access these LED stripes um, using a Raspberry Pi. It's not so straightforward. I did. I don't know. At least he says so, and I did not um, go into the details. But I believe so. And um, yeah, it's great that it's available. What else is there to say? Yes, um, there's also to mention that my wife was um, very patiently um, was very patient with me um, recently, and um, I must say now that I'm back to social life again after realizing the whole device now within the last two weeks yes and um, we can continue to 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 live our our normal life by now um, yes that's it about the word clock um, thanks for watching um, yes okay and if you're still there I don't know, maybe you were then in this case interested in realizing such a device, I don't know. Um, but what just came to my mind um, is that if you really want to do it properly, um, you actually might consider to add two more things. Um, one thing is a um, capacitor between the ground and the plus 5 um, volt pin um, to somehow smoothen the, um, any um, changes or variations in the, in, in the current or in the incoming current or voltage, whatever. I'm not the expert, but I've read about um, that in, in, in different tutorials, which which advise to do though. And we furthermore have here, um, well, actually the the point um, that we operate this LED stripe at five volts, but we provide here as um, through the input um, or through the data um, wire only 3.3 volts and this is actually somehow yeah, clashing with the specifications of this LED stripe since they um, state that um, the LED stripe should be operated with 5 volts and that the data signal is expected to be provided with at least 70% of this operating voltage. And 70% of 5 volts um, correspond to, uh, corresponds, if I remember correctly, to 3.5 volts. And um, the Raspberry Pi provides this data signal um, at 3.3 volts. So we're missing here somehow 0.3 volts um, yeah, to, to have everything um, according to the specifications. So if you really, um, if you really want to do it correctly, um, yeah, well, you, you, you might um, just add here a level shifter um, to shift the, 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 the outgoing data here from 3.3 volt to 5 volts. Um, yeah, but that's all to the best of my knowledge. I'm not an electronics expert. And um, if you know better, um, yeah, please let me know. And um, yeah, that's it so far, finally. Thanks for watching. Okay.